So um, welcome to how to build a chatbot based on your own company data that is uh, stored in SharePoint. Um, very, very short, just about me. Hey, I'm Louisa for everyone who does not know me. I'm an independent M365 and Power Platform consultant. I'm based in Germany. I sit here in Düsseldorf. I was traveling a lot today, just like first day at home since uh, two weeks. So this is really, really great. Um, I'm a dual MVP in both business applications and M365 Dev. Um, I blog at m365princess.com and you can find me on socials under at uh, Louisa Fraser, which is my name. Okay, so um, this, this is usually the problem statement that my customers present me with. So they have company data, of course, stored in SharePoint library, and libraries usually look like this. So this is just like ugly and messy, and then they try to find a way to just like circumvent the obvious that they would need to tidy up and ask me, hey, Louise, could you maybe please build a chatbot for us that would just like query the data that sits in these um, these documents in our library or in our libraries? And I'm just like, yeah, of course I can do that, but um, still it would be better to tidy up first, but um, they never want that, so um, I want the chatbot. So um, the way I approach this, I would use uh, Azure Cognitive Search to um, index the um, content that sits in the library. And then we will um, utilize um, Azure OpenBNI to um, query that index. And later on, we can either deploy this to an Azure web app or we can build a Power Platform custom connector so that we, we can utilize that in either a Power App or in Power Automate or even in Power Virtual Agents and you just see where we can use this in uh, the Power Platform. The way to do this is first we need to get some prep work done. And the prep work usually is if we want to query something that sits in a library, we should have a library and some content in that library. Um, often the question is, will cascading subfolders, will that work? Yes, it does. Still, it is not super recommended. So search is slower and indexing takes more time. And the more time it takes, the more expensive it is. So um, highly recommended to first tidy that up. Uh, what you need to do is note down your site URL. So if you note down your site URL, not the entire library URL, just the site, uh, then you need to have an Azure Cognitive Search instance. And you will also need to turn on the um, system assigned managed identity for that. So this is a little bit messy, I think, because um, we need that managed identity just so that we can circumvent uh, passing in a tenant ID. So we just like check if that's in the same tenant and if that managed identity is turned on, then we know this, but we'll not use that actually to sign in because we still need an app registration Entra ID app registration. So yes, uh, formerly known as uh, Azure ID app registration. We will give it permissions, uh, delegated permissions for site.read.all and files.read.all. And also we will note down the app ID. So that is just like super, super crucial. And the last thing on that slide is um, we need to have a model deployed in Azure OpenAI. And we will also need to note down the API key. So by now, if you do that, you should have just like notepad open and just like have a bunch of things um, that you note down. Um, maybe you realize that you do not even need to have a secret because that is just like managed behind the scenes. Um, but that are the things that would need to prepare for this. The actual work that we will need to do is, I would say, four and a half calls. So the first uh, API call that we need to make is we need to add uh, this SharePoint library as a data source to Azure Cognitive Search. Second call that we're going to make is we will create an index in Cognitive Search. Next one is we'll create an indexer. And to create an indexer, so this is kind of just like two two step process because if we if we run this call, this will just like run forever because in the meantime we will need to be asked to, to log in with a device code flow. And that can only happen if we get the status for that. So um, we need to just like run one call in between and then return to the um, to the other one. And the last call is the actual chat completion call against Azure OpenAI, in which we'll ask OpenAI something against our data that now is indexed by cognitive search, which sits in the SharePoint library. OK, so to see how this works. I uh, will switch to um, Postman, make that easy for you. But uh, first, maybe I will show you the uh, document library. So I have a site. In that site, I have a document library. It's the um, default uh, library. Um, Louis, I'm going to zoom in a bit, a bit. 
Excellent. Like this. Thank you. Yep. Perfect. So um, we have a few documents and uh, we have a fictional company called BioBright. So this does not really exist. And I created a few documents uh, about BioBright. So for a mission statement and the welfare uh, program and so on and so forth. So that is um, information about this fictional company that exists nowhere on the internet. It is only in this document library. And um, what we now do is um, I have a Postman collection and I will zoom in here as well. That should do the job already. And uh, we will have uh, our uh, well, four and a half calls. Uh, first one being uh, creating a data source. So um, ACSSP, so that is just like my cognitive search instance. So it's every cognitive search SharePoint. And obviously we need to pass in a few things. Um, so we will create a data source, we give it a name, it has the type SharePoint will pass in a connection string. That connection string uh, consists of our um, site URL, which we can see here, then the application ID from our application um, registration in Entra uh, that we did before. I will specify that this is the default site library and that should be good. And when I practice this, I accidentally hit the send button. So this is already done. Ooh, that, that looks bad. Well, I'll clear this out. So this already ran. Um, creating the index would be the second one. So again, we will just um, run this again. The indexes will say, hey, in that index, we want to have some fields. So please, please do that as well. As always, in the headers, we will specify an API key, which we noted down before as well. And if you like to... Um, you can um, you can export this then later on as well and specify here even more which fields uh, have uh, which content type. Next, I'll send this very quickly. So this should return it 201. So that got created so that we can see, okay, this is here, not here. So let's see SharePoint index PNP. If you want to go to the um, cognitive search instance in the Azure portal, and see the indexes. So you can see I did this a lot of times already because I've done this a few times already. And this here is the latest one. It has no documents so far indexed, but the SharePoint index um, is already here. We go back to uh, Postman. We will do the next call, which will be the indexer. So we'll post against the indexers um, endpoints specify the name and specify the data source name, which is not the SharePoint data source PNP, and specify, hey, I want to have PDF and um, DocX um, documents. And there's no schedule that this runs on, so you know, I would just like to uh, do this at one time. So if I now hit send, this will run and run and run and run and run. So um, I will need to be a little bit quick because uh, when while this is running, I need to run this one here as well. So the body is empty and it's a get against the status of the indexer endpoint here, which I specified before. So what we're doing is uh, when, when I run this one here, I will get a response with a device code uh, prompt. So this little code, and then I need to log in. Um, doing that and it's, um, prompting that, I'll just like hit the send button here. So this is sending the request. This will just like run forever. We'll then run this here. Ooh, it doesn't like the um, API key here in the header. So I will delete that and try again. This does an OK. I get this this code over here. We'll see. Sign in. Control V. I hit next. Yes, I do want to sign in. Yes, I do have a password. Now it's prompting me for MFA. I'll just use the um, SMS for that because it's faster. Checking my phone during community call. That's great. This is for some X257. We'll verify this. Yes, this is all I'm trying. This looks good. Um, next thing is I can go back in here. It looks like, wow, this returned an error. Um, or not threat by this because I would just like wait it out because this is always how that works. 
So I checked before, and if I go in here now and say, okay, indexers, and we should see just like in a minute, hopefully, the PNP, just like that, that's ending in PNP. It does not right now, but I promise this will do the job. Maybe coming back to, back to that a little bit later um, again, because right now it does not show up. Um, once we once we have that in place, we can do one of two things, or we can actually we can do both. We can either go to the um, OpenAI Studio and go to the chat playground, and in the chat playground we can say, "Hey, I, I do want to add my own data." And obviously, I did that before, but I will just like close that out um, again. Things. Hey, Louisa, could you zoom in on this one too for us, just so it picks of up on the video course. well? Of Thank course. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is this is good. Okay, so I will add a data source, and I'll say, "Hey, this is cognitive search." And this is Azure Subscription One, and this is my cognitive search service. And I will just like leave. need a little bit of a moment, and you can see here now it showed up. It's the SharePoint Index PNP. So this is all here now. And yes, I do acknowledge this. Select next, which is like say contents and fields. Same next, the keyword search, gonna save and close. Now this is here. Now we can ask it questions based on the data that is here. So what is the, um, I don't know, value or what are the core values? Yes, I can't type. Bio bright. Bio bright. Okay, I'm asking this. Hope it's thinking. Oh, come on. Okay, so we try again. Um, right. Maybe it still needs a little bit of a moment. Okay, so it answers this, it even finds a reference. So there is a document that tells me more about, um, about um, healthcare at uh, BioBright. So this works. So now I have um, a few options. I can either say, hey, I want to have a new web app, which means I can give it a name. Uh, so this is the BioBright uh, app. Now I'll select my subscription. I'll select a resource group, select a location, whatever. Select the pricing plan, go for S1. I acknowledge that this will just execute usage in my account. Okay. Yeah. Please don't do spaces and I will deploy this. And this usually takes, well, let's say a few minutes. While this is doing its job, we can do something else. So, um, and I obviously prepared this already um, for you. We can use the very same information that we used in Postman and use that in Power Automate and Power Apps. Not natively though, because we cannot make direct API calls, but we can wrap this API just in a custom connector. Mm -hmm. And in that custom connector then we can use that and expose it um, to Power Virtual Agent and to Power Automate and to Power Apps and just like everything. Um, to do that, so obviously I already prepared this for you. So um, zooming in just like a little bit. Um, so our host is uh, my Azure OpenAI instance. And of course I have a base um, URL and just like ends um, with the um, deployment that I'm using on the security tab. Um, I just specify that I have an API key and that will pass it into the um, header. And the definition so far, I only have one um, one action, but that can easily be um, expanded. So that is our chat completion. And to do that, I um, I import this um, with a sample, and there's just like this endpoint. So it's extensions slash chat chat uh, completions, and I modified the body in a way so that I could um, pass in a um, question in the um, content. Uh, property. So maybe what are the core values of BioBright, but um, that is then something that I can always specify either from a Power Automate flow later on or from a Power App. And obviously that would be something that if I would build that Power App or just like put or hook into a text input box or something um, similar like that. 
So to do so, um, obviously, um, we would like to test this operation here. It's thinking. Thinking again. Well, so it gives a status 200, which is cool. So that already worked. And we can see uh, the core values of BioRight innovations are sustainability and yada, yada, yada. So that is uh, that is a cool thing. And um, we have all of the, the properties that we needed here. We can specify these here, but we could also just like uh, run a script to just like pass that in automatically so that we do, do not do this to do anymore. And now we could um, use that in a Power Automate flow and do some very, very cool stuff with that or just like a simple um, Canvas app and uh, run this from there. Um, and maybe, 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 um, no. It is um, still deploying, but I promise, I think you, you saw this before that you can just like easily, um, easily deploy those web apps and then you can just like add them as a tab to a Teams channel, uh, for instance, or you can create your, your PWA app um, from that. So that should be super fun. Um, I would like to share a few gadgets. So there's just like a few things where I thought, wow, that uh, struck me just like a little bit. Um, first thing is OpenAI, this is cool, and everyone wants to build something with OpenAI, but it is yet another API. So there is nothing that is truly special about it. We send requests, we, we, we get data back, and we just plug the data into our apps. Second thing is please, please watch out because um, cognitive search can be super expensive. And if you don't need that service anymore, then um, you can just like delete that resource um, and recreate it if needed. And third thing is um, what I showed you today that only works for uh, data in libraries. It does not work for content on pages and it does not work for lists either. So that is right now, this is limited to um, libraries and we'll need to wait if they put out something for um, other content as well. And with that, um, thank you and happy building.